Hello, welcome to the May 2015 shop tour. It is May 2nd as I'm recording this and hopefully should post up this week. And uh, here's what we got going on the shop. It is a busy, busy time. Uh, I've got a couple of projects either open or need to be finished immediately even if I haven't started them yet. And, uh, and of course I'm working a whole bunch extra at work right now and dealing with lots of scouting activities so time in the shop is very minimal. But let's get on with the tour so I can get back to work. Here in the front corner, as always, is my mess of stuff. Um, I actually just cleared a couple things out of here and threw them up in the attic. But you've got some scrap, or I've got some scrap plywood. I should probably just toss that. Um, some rags, a scale I use, two scales I use for plywood derby cars. That can all come out of the shop. That's really what this corner is for, is things that are waiting to, to leave the shop. Um, there's my right angle drill. That can go and leave the shop. Here remains the masonry tools that I brought into the shop to clear out that block that you can see behind all this. So once I get all this stuff out, I can get back to work on the block, though I don't know when I'm going to get to the block because the block is not a big priority to get um, a couple projects out of the way, so it's probably going to wait there for a while. As we come around, it's a band saw, table saw, nothing too fancy going on there, though I think this will be the first shop tour where I have networking in the shop. So the blue line is a 300 foot Cat6 cable that runs um, up into the attic and from there it runs completely to the absolute far corner of my house. My house is essentially a Z shape, the shop being in one end and the internet access in the complete opposite end of the house. So a couple weeks ago I finally bit the bullet and ran that. So you can see my switch and a couple other cables, that's how I'm able to actually do the, do the podcast in the shop rather than in the basement and get a better connection. Um, I still need to, here on the wall, build a cabinet that's going to house the computer that currently lives down in my basement. That is the c computer I used for show notes and just general access. Um, so right now I'm bringing a myriad of laptops, setting them up on the table saw and running the podcast that way. But that being said, ultimately right there, the computer will go. <clears throat> Moving along, I've still got these racks that need to get emptied out. I don't, don't really have a home for places, for things that are in the racks to go. You can see that box there is things I've taken out of the rack that are just going to get moved up in the attic because I don't have a proper home for them. But um, they're in the way. <laughs> they need to go. Here is my garbage pail full of clamps. All those clamps need to ultimately go up here somewhere, hanging from the ceiling in a clamp rack like that, in clamp racks like this. I need to make some clamp racks for these these clamps. So far, really all I have hung up is here are my quick clamps with a couple of F-style clamps and cam clamps at the end. And here are my parallel clamps. But I don't really have a home for the smaller F-style clamps and there's wooden clamps in there. There's all sorts. That's with the exception of this bag, which is a vacuum filter. It's all clamps inside there. So I need to come up with a better place for that and get that garbage pail out. Here's my regular garbage pail that rolls around. That just kind of moves around. And here's the current CT with the dust deputy. Now, what you see here on the bench, and if I move around, what you see there on the floor is the start of my sander cart. Now, this is a project that I'll detail more about um, in its own posts and in the chair cast. But this cart is going to essentially take, I don't know, eight, nine sanders. So it'll take the RAS 115, it'll take the Rotex 125. I'll take the ETS-155, the ETS-125, um, it'll take the RO-90, it'll take the RO-150, and the ETS-153. Take all those sanders, plus this 7-inch grinder, plus my 4.5-inch grinder, and I'll hang them all in these V-notches, as you see the, the grinder is hanging right now. Now this particular one has these big wide V's and that's going to accommodate the 7 inch grinder and 
the six inch Rotex, uh, I think it's the RO150, it's that one. Um, because they're, they're beasts and they need these bigger slots. The rest of them will get smaller slots similar to these which are on a previous sand rack I made. So see it's a much narrower slot, it takes up a little bit less space. And the goal of this, oh and then it all rests on this carcass I'm making here that'll get three drawers. And the goal is that the drawers will hold all the sandpaper which currently takes up shelf space over there and these racks, there will be a total of four of these panels that will go two on the outside and then raise in the middle, two more in the middle, kind of in a, in a pyramid shape. Um, and that will get rid of all or most of these sustainers. And I'm hoping to el completely eliminate this shelf and take things from this shelf and move them up to that shelf and essentially clear up all this space from the floor to here and what that'll do is open the space up more um, ultimately along this wall when I get rid of those my router table needs to fit along this wall somewhere so that's in the future something I need to fit there also it'll let the dust deputy fit in a little bit better because the dust deputy is now taller than that and only fits right here against the bench and the sander cart itself will be roughly the same height as the dust deputy that's what I work towards so it'll fit in that space also um, and so that's the one thing is I kind of win some space by going with this sander cart but also when I need to use it I pick it up and I use it and I'm done and I hang it back down uh, while there will be a little bit of futzing in terms of power cords and dust hose it's still going to be much faster and much more efficient than having to find this sustainer take it out find a horizontal surface uh, not the bench uh, right now probably a table saw, find a horizontal surface, open it up, take it out, and set it up. So I'm hoping that this cart makes my sanding a lot more efficient, especially as I come up into the rocker build. So that's the big open project right now. And then I've still got, here you can see the parts for Dave's trophy. It was almost done, and I got a design change request to make the bottom one of these pieces, not the roughly one inch thick that it is now, but a few inches thick so they can put a number of plaques around it. I completely understand why that is, but now it's another piece I need to build where I was just about to start finishing. So um, I need to also close up that, uh, you see here's another piece of the trophy. I need to close up the trophy so I can get this off the bench. That's really what's going on in the shop as we come around. You won't see too many changes here. You got nice, nice light coming through. It's a beautiful Saturday day. Um, the, the joiner, come back here, the miter saw is continuing to function very well. Um, I'm very pleased with this dust setup I have here. I think I mentioned this in the last tour, but it's the dust deputy I originally bought that I found that I can't use on this CT. Uh, so it's here underneath the miter saw, a dedicated tiny little shop vac, and one of those vacuum switches right there in the wall. So when I turn on the miter saw, it turns on the vacuum, sucks it all up. It's very convenient. Here's my homemade cyclone. It continues to be working fantastically. This is one of those tools where once you get it, you don't know how you worked without it. Um, I absolutely love it. And, uh, and then there's the planer, and we're back outside. As I said, it is a beautiful Saturday morning, so I've got the driveway, excuse me, I've got the door open so you can see the driveway. And here is my benchmark table. Now, I often get questions on this table I really like it. Uh, it's a little bit big for me in that when it folds up, you can see this top section, the legs fold in and it folds to be about about yay thick. And this vertical or horizontal piece that you, I put on the edge and can slide in. When I'm in the shop, it has to go right there in between the plane and the table saw. And it's hard to walk around and it's really inconvenient. In the summertime, I leave it there and every time I'm in the shop, whether I'm using the table or not, I pull the table out and set it up. Today, I do plan to use it for cutting out more of those plywood pieces for the sander cart. Um, but whether I'm using it or not, it basically gets thrown out here and set up. And in the winter time, I typically uh, fold it up and set it in the attic because I'm not coming out in the driveway to use it in the winter time. And as I said, I can't open it up in the shop. All that being said, it is absolutely rock solid. Um, there's very little, if any, movement, and the little movement you see now is because I haven't adjusted those feet to make it perfectly level for my driveway, which is not level. 
but it's got tons of weight. I say all this, but it would appear that Benchmark has gone out of business. Um, I've not been able to find their website, which is a, a damn shame because it, it really was a great table. But that being said, that is the shop for May 2nd, 2015. I hope you're getting lots done in your shop too, and we'll talk soon.